So Michael, you started you started as a visual artist and you went to art school, is that right? Before you became a theater designer? No, not at all. I went to, uh, I, I was an English major, uh, did a, a liberal arts degree at, at university. I mean, uh, it wasn't uh, a visual arts thing at all. So where did the visual arts stream come into your life? Well, um, my mom was always, uh, always drew and was a painter and was kind of oriented that way. So I expect I picked up some of it from her. But at college, um, I started to work with uh, a university players group there uh, who we did plays staged in a, a couple of standard sets that they had they used all the time. And so I, I criticized one of them one day. I said, you know, this really is bad looking. I said, can't we maybe do something a little different here? They said, well, if you're so good, why don't you try to design something and we'll see what we can do. So I said, okay, I will. And um, that was actually the first time I ever designed. I didn't know anything about how to go about it or anything. So you just made it up on the spot? I just made it up, yeah. And uh, it looked pretty good, and everyone said, oh, wow, this is great. <laughs> and um, the rest is history. I mean, I, I did a few more for them, and then afterwards I came to study at the theater school in Montreal here. So you, you, your only sort of formal training for theatrical design was NTS? Well, my, my background was in, like I said, in English, yeah. but uh, after, like as a postgraduate thing, I studied design for the theater in which I had um, one of my best instructors was, um, was uh, Andre Vesci, who was an architect, trained architect, a Czech guy. But uh, Czech architects are wonderful because they're very sensitive to scenography and uh, kind of the metaphorical dimension of uh, scenography and architecture too. So there's a great overlapping of those disciplines in uh, in well, Czechoslovakia and Eastern Europe generally. So he was a great teacher and I learned a lot from him. I had a number of other good ones too, but he was my, uh, my best one. So how does the, me, me as an actor standing on the outside looking, how does the kind of macro and the micro fit together? You're talking about architecture and learning structure and architecture and yet you are actually creating, uh, you know, worlds, small worlds in which we play. How does the form of it relate to the actual substance in the story? Well, I think it's because um, um, a lot of our inspiration as, uh, as stage designers or as scenographers comes from the built environment. And I mean, a lot of plays happen in rooms maybe, or uh, the built environment is a constant presence. So uh, architecture becomes uh, quite an interesting thing uh, because you select constantly uh, motifs from architectural. That's why architectural history is, is important for a designer to know about because you need sometimes to be able to call on a certain vocabulary of architectural forms that aren't, that we don't see every day, right? Uh, and also, architects express their ideas in terms of plan and section, always. That's the classic way to present an architectural notion. And designers do exactly the same thing. I mean, you do a ground plan, and then you do a section, a section I just gave to <coughs> Paul here. So uh, there is that, uh, there is a certain overlapping of the disciplines, uh, and one derives from the other. 